eat that food every day. Same thing. Mike, I gotta cut out of here for five minutes. I'll be back. Yeah, 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 I just hope that uh, the enforcer understands that I'm not really a bad guy. And maybe one day that we'll have that cup of coffee. You know, I'm not really a bad guy. You didn't threaten the guy. I think you asked him uh, very nicely have a cup of coffee and uh, he started stuttering and he doesn't he doesn't uh, he doesn't come out he doesn't if he don't know you're a stranger I don't know what he was saying and then Johnny Johnny was ringing all the bells in the on the block and if I know John John was probably trying to get in the building to look for the way the coax goes in and bang on the door that didn't happen, he would have ripped the antenna or broke it over his knee. But you asked him uh, very nicely, very polite. You don't talk to me that nice. <laughs> Mike? Yes. I, I think Johnny asked him very kindly, very gentlemanly, and very socially friendly. The big problem is, is that what little bit of man is left inside that other man realizes that he came out of his mouth way wrong to a man he didn't know, said some fucking bullshit, and uh, well, that's his conscience, common sense, and fear working on him on a decline, because he honestly believes that his beef is going to be able to be made with anybody he chooses. And once he turns his radio off, whatever he left there stays there. So his conscience sort of scared the living daylights out of him on that issue, Mike. I hear what you're saying. And I concur. Excuse me. Enforcer, I'm not really a bad guy, if you believe me or not. <laughs> stations will throw off a mobile look on your meter while they're waving and dancing like that. That's not Pokey Pyman, unless he went into the car. Who else 
else did you say it could be? I said that stations, cheesy portable stations, will throw off a mobile effect view on your meter, and they are not mobile. Okay, Roger. Yeah, you got your dining with JR and JR bangs in over here. Bada bang, bada bing, bada bing, bada boom, bada bing, bada bang. Beep, ba, bo, this and that, where you want to go, to the baptism. Clarkson and ten. Guys, I gotta step out and go get some supplies. I will be back in a little while. Uh, I hope it's, I hope that nice breeze you're talking about is on Utica and Clark said I could use a cool breeze. The King of New York, I'm Clark. Shit, man. Hey, hey, Joe, hey, don't be scared. I'm dead. You're such a fucking fag. That's what you're 
you are. Someone short of a fucking hard eye. You can't even fuck your wife. But he is. You already know it. You can't even bang your wife right. Is that 505 again, Richie? Oh, yeah. Your wife is going to be banging some guy named Jose in the projects. I do believe he's about, uh, yeah, out there. He only comes in with like one swing and three. You'll see him in the video, Gates. Yeah, I think he's out there underneath, uh, underneath the other fag boy. Guys, I'll catch you later. Catch you. you you'll, you'll know when I'm back. I'll let you know. I'm going to try to make the uh, 1027 or the 1127. Either way, you'll know. I'm clear. I'm going to try to keep the 27 past the hour. I'm, I'm such a, I'm such a old crackhead cornball. I'm gonna try to kill up your mother. The matter is Vic 139. Vic 139. Where are you? Cornball. What a fucking jerk off. Maybe inside his cup of tea, he might have went to 40. This fucking retard is on my swear. Something important. He tries to fucking key up at 27 minutes past the hour. Who gives a fuck? You are a fucking crackhead. That's what makes me a unique individual radio operator. The things I do for my own forte and my own uh, my own signature. Oh well.
should try it.
tubes are killing me. They're warming me up, man. Put the AC on 65 and high. 15,000 BTUs. Small room. Usually you can hang meat in this room. Have a snowball fight. Wear a parka and be comfortable. But it's just right. It's just right. See, there's a holiday tomorrow, so I'm not working. Hey, uh, JR, are you working tomorrow? I'll take that as a yes.
I forget what they are. It's got a new driver, and they're like 60%. 66%, 59%. If you could use a new set, she's, she's running like a top tonight. That was excellent, bro. Yeah, you went from uh, zero to hero when you turned that on. Yeah, I love this box, man. Roger. 10-4. Just about can't hear you. Very low. Yeah, 10-4. I mean, uh, 
uh, just, you know, it's either like uh, using a, uh, uh, a Bentley to a, uh, you know, CTS. Pretty much, yes, sir.
shape, I'm missing teeth. Wow, they got me down pat. JR, somebody must have sent them a picture. We might have a rat in our, in our midst. <laughs> really? Ten four. I got a pretty good idea who it could be, too. I, you know, I have an idea, I'm not 100% positive, but who it is, it might be, uh, the kid that sounds like he's got a fucking permanent wedgie, or a fucking Uncle Chichi. Yeah, if not both. Definitely the kid who got a wedgie, definitely. He talks to all of them. I don't know, you know, to, to what extent, but, you know. I'm sure he's asked. And, uh, uh, Uncle Cheech, I cannot deny nor supply information. So, I'm uh, just gonna leave that alone. Yeah, but I don't know, man. It just, uh, seems kind of strange that guy's trying to get, get in and get as much information as he can, like a little fucking spy. We got the spy among us. John, when you see me, you're gonna be surprised. I got a sheep head all bald. I got, uh, at least a little, a little thinner than, than 911. Oh.
And uh, just, uh, I'm, I'm, I'm sad to see that it didn't portray. Throw me for a loop. <laughs> Yeah, but I'm sure it was short-lived. Listen, you know what? They won't be, I don't know if there are how many times of, uh, how many times of opportunity he's going to give me to give him props. But uh, like I said earlier, man, the man was dead on. And uh, it's just, uh, it's funny that it didn't just uh, continue. <laughs> I have to ask, what was the situation pertaining to that he was dead on. I gotta ask this. I have to know. How was the conversation going that he was dead on? Talking about something else? Or what we were exactly talking about? Exactly what we were talking about, you know. And uh, it's just, uh, it made sense of everything. So it was funny because he, he had to be listening throughout the whole thing from start to finish. And uh, I don't know how long we were talking, an hour, an hour and a half, uh, for, for the whole nine, he stood back there, sat in his chair, and took notes. Uh, I was impressed. That's what they do. And they twist the shit around. They twist the fucking shit around. Like the time I told Vic that I was taking my mom for her birthday, took my parents out to eat for my for their birthday. So I'm going to pick my mom up. And by the end of the night, it was turned around and my mom was living in my house and uh, a whole bunch of other shit got twisted around. It was funny, man. I was fucking laughing. I was couldn't laugh any harder. But then when they persisted with it, I was like, all right, enough. Come on. This isn't what's happening. It's not the way it is. Then it started getting on my nerves, you know? But that's their whole idea. Yeah, but his interpretation, like I said, John, his uh, his taking notes uh, on, on this one only, only on this one, uh, he he was dead on, you know. Uh, he spoke about uh, you know how uh, how uh, if there's true friendships out here, if there aren't true friendships, uh, they they talk to each other like they're true friends, but they really aren't true friends. He was talking about things that people don't want to talk about, you know, and that's the way he put it together, and and, and it's not the way I wanted to put it out there. Myself, because uh, I didn't want to seem uh, like the, the arrogant person, but uh, he, he put it together correctly, uh, and he decided to come out here and say it. And uh, I, I, like I said, I was giving him props. All right, well, we put the seed in his head yesterday, because he was listening to our conversation. That's where he got it from. So whatever props, we have to give ourselves props for that then, too. Because whatever we said obviously made sense to someone that they repeated it exactly to word for word the way we said it. Well, listen, like I said, I mean, uh, I said it earlier, we, we, they sit back and they listen and they, they don't have their own conversations. They have conversations of others and they do when they, uh, you know, do what they want to do with it. But at the same token, uh, uh, what he, what, how he, like I said, how he interpreted it, I can't say it anymore tonight than what I've already said it, you know. Uh, he was, uh, it was all good. Pretty much, he was just out there listening, and that's it. That's all you can say. And he waited for the opportunity to let you know that he was listening. Yeah, he just put it together perfectly. That's all I can say. Any, any more than that, uh, there's, uh, there's nothing else to say. He does that all the time. One time I was out there having a conversation with Frankie. We were talking about how Pyerman was going to do the, uh, the Caitlin fucking thing. And he was getting a fucking banana split. And he was getting the whole nine yards. He was getting his makeup done. And I was saying, well, I wonder what name he's going to use. He can't use Kaylin. It's too popular. And the next day, no joke, the next fucking day, he came out and he's trying to use that against me. The whole thing that I was saying, everything me and Frankie were talking about, about him, he turned around and tried to use it on me. And I said, look at this piece of shit. First of all, get your own fucking material, you piece of shit. You're using everything that we said yesterday to a T. He 
but the way he deserves to turn out. That's it, man. And you know, well, that comes from growing up. I don't know, man. I said this before, but if you don't grow up with it, you don't know what, it, what I'm talking about. You know, there's, there's not a lot of people. There's a few of us out here that grow up with it. I know who it is, and we still have it. It's just in us, and that's it. We can't move more with it. And it's something you can't teach. You just have to grow up with it. Do I turn around and uh, not say a word? And do I uh, sit there or smile? Or, uh, what, what, what do I do? <laughs> do I walk around and look for my teeth first? Or do I go for uh, a fucking towel to wipe my face? What do I do? Do I sit up off the ground? Do I stand there? What do I do? Do I say, hold up, I'm sorry? What do I do? Is it is really being... Is it, is it really happening? Is it... it is it... <laughs> yeah, man, it's not really happening. Damn, that motherfucker just... And I'm waking up like 15 minutes later and... Holy shit, did I really just get knocked out? Then it becomes reality. You just lost 15 minutes of your time from a fucking gigantic fist. Did that... Where, where am I? Did, did that really happen? Hello? Uh, uh, who, 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 where am I? <laughs> no, John, you, you never get to that. You never get to that physical level. I hear you. But uh, I'm always ready. And I would probably execute it. But you know what? I would, you know, like Frankie said, we were talking at night, we were at the bank. I would probably feel bad after that. After doing it, like Frankie said. He made, he made a little good sense when he was saying a couple of things he said. That after you do it, you probably say to yourself, why did I do that, you know? It's probably not him. It's probably that fucking demon inside him making him do it or something. You know, I said, you know what? Fuck it. Then I hope if I did it, I hope I broke the fucking demon's face. Because something had to be done. Yeah, how ironic is that, you know? No matter how right it is and how wrong that person was, and, uh... That, that was the, you know, end solution to the whole thing. And when you go home that night after the blood slows down, uh, the heartbeat slows down, uh, you, have a, you have a drink or two because uh, you were all worked up. And uh, you really, you know, you hurt that guy. And then you say to yourself, for what? For what? Did, did we really have to go down that way? It's, just, it's ironic. It's ironic how, how, how a predator thinks. Yeah, you're right, but it's, it's, it's ironic. But then you got to say to yourself, we really didn't have to go down that way. It all depends on how your enemy comes to you. You know? It really doesn't. It just all depends on how they think it's going to come go down. But that's the way they want it to go down. That's the way it's going to go down then. But don't underestimate anyone. A lot of people out there probably uh, either agree or uh, definitely not disagree. Maybe they're stuck in limbo on what line, on what side of the line to be. But uh, at the end of the day, at the end of the day, you gotta live with yourself. Yeah, well, at the end of the day, I know whatever the situation was, I was not the primary cause of it, but I was the one who ended it. That's what I know. Either way. You know, and then they realize, hey, listen, we can't be doing this shit. You know, there's a lot of... There's a lot of people out there that are kind of fucked up, you know, that don't take shit from anybody. They don't realize that. 
You know, they live in the fucking ghetto or wherever the fuck they live. They think everybody's all oh, this and that. But then, you know, they don't realize there's people out there that don't live in a ghetto that are just as tough or even tougher than them. They grew up in fucked up neighborhoods. You know, maybe they're not in one now because they were smart enough to get their way out of one and work their way out of it. You know, that doesn't mean they weren't there before and know how the game's played. Yeah, I'm a very firm believer that if you don't like the ghetto and if you don't get out of it because you don't like it, uh, if you stay there, there's a problem. You don't want to live, you don't want to live there, uh, leave there, you want to stay there, you want to be part of it. Yep, that's it. And it's a lot more than uh, being part of it these days. These days being part of it means you die. It's not even a joke anymore. Hell yeah, most definitely it's real. Crackers are still pulling on each other's pants. When I was young, John, we were on 65th Street and 20th Avenue by the train station. The car loaded people from Spanish Harlem pulled up. Before they got out of the car, they had garbage cans, fucking everything we could find. Three trunks, a bench was smashed through their fucking car. Before they were able to open the door, they none of them even got a chance to get the fuck out of the car, man. They were, they were like, they tried to jump out. They would have been, they would have been, been all over. The whole neighborhood would have came out. Bro, those old ladies out there with brooms. People, people, old grandpas were out there with the fucking reeks. Get them motherfucking spicks. Get them out of this fucking neighborhood. Before they even, they never came back. You know what I'm talking about. Yeah, it's a fault. That's just the way it was. They don't have the feast no more down here, do they? On 65th and 20th, they used to have it all every year. I don't know if they have it no more. 18th Avenue feast is over with. It was the last week of August. No, I know 18th Avenue. I'm talking about 65th and 20th used to have one. No, 65th and 20th? No. They had a 20th Avenue feast and then they had a, uh, uh, they always have the 18th. I think they stopped the 20th. It's the San Gennaro feast. Took my family there. Sat outside, nice. I don't really smoke cigars that much, but I smoked a cigar. Walking through the feast. Bought some goodies. Before the, uh, the train tracks, 
only in Little Italy. They don't have them. The medallions, like on 13th Avenue anymore, in the coffee shops, you get the medallions for your car. Nope. Just Little Italy. You're talking about only one cafe left on 18th Avenue. Yeah, I know, right? These used to be hundreds. Thirteenth Avenue, you come walk down the block, there's fucking twenty-five thousand cuisines sitting outside on little tables. <laughs> I resemble that remark. <laughs> I know, me too. Don't feel bad. Just ask me if I'm on the radio. Yeah, for the past two hours we've been on. Longer than that.
Thanks for taking a walk. Okay, man. Catch you later when you get back. Like 